I'm writing my third AI research paper and I want to talk about how to get into AI research and how to publish papers, as well as potential paths towards general intelligence and super intelligence, and they are not LLMs. This paper is within my open super intelligence lab. So if you don't know what to do research on, you may just join our Discord below and do research on this paper with us. I get a lot of questions from people asking what they should research and this question is completely impossible to answer because first of all I don't know what I even should research. Secondly, nobody knows what they should research, even the best researchers in the world. Especially because when people ask this, the question is actually what is the research path towards AGI or super intelligence? And so that is impossible to answer. Very accomplished, very successful AI researcher He Kai Ming said that uh, this is a million dollar question and he didn't even have an answer to that. Uh, he just said that he is working on computer vision and that's all he could say. Because it's literally impossible to tell uh, what is the best thing to research. Because then everybody would just research that, the problem would get solved quickly. But nobody knows what. Uh, that's why like there is million different people doing million different things until we figure out that something works well like transformers. Secondly, people ask what they should research and how to become AI researcher because they want me to give them some magic trick magic video that they will watch and then overnight they'll be AI researcher. The answer here is you need to put in first 50 hours, then 1000 hours, then 10,000 hours and after 10,000 hours you'll be an AI researcher. And maybe you don't need 10,000 in reality, maybe you need like you need like 500 to 1000 hours uh, to start producing quality research papers, but you just need to put in the hours. So, and if you go to my channel here, you can just watch any video you find interesting, especially uh, these courses. Now, don't watch news like GPT 5.2 is coming out. That's useless. You're not learning to research. You need to watch like the courses on how to do research. But it's just important that you put in the hours. There is no secret video that you will watch that will make you instantly overnight AI researcher. Next thing, talking to me or Harvard researchers or Jan Le Kuhn will not make you a better researcher. It's completely useless. Uh, chatting with somebody, sending LinkedIn messages, sending emails. This is a fake work where uh, it feels like working. It's not working. You're not progressing. You're not learning anything. You need to sit down and code and read the research paper and write the research paper. Then you need to think carefully if your goal is to get an AI researcher job because once you get it, you will usually do what the company needs you to do. So they will tell you, uh, filter this data, fill this Excel sheet with this data. So uh, you may actually not, you may realize that you don't want to do this. If you are curious about science, you can do it on your own. If you get a job at a famous AI company, you might not even choose what you do. You will just uh, do what needs to be sold in the product. And then you will start feeling like, wait, that's not what I signed up for. I didn't sign up to be told what to do and uh, to make money selling a product. I wanted to do some AI research that contributes to humanity. So be careful when thinking that the ultimate goal is to get a job at a famous AI company. Next point, so many people are scared of math like ghosts. I'm getting messages like, can I do AI research without math? First of all, you cannot. Secondly, why are you scared of math? Even if some people are in high school and this math is PhD math, high school people are completely capable of understanding PhD math with enough time. Even elementary school kids are completely capable of understanding PhD level math with enough time. One thing where there is no math, but it's very useful is creating data sets. So data sets can actually be a lot more useful than the models because data sets help create a lot, a lot of models and they solve so many different issues for companies. So you can create data sets or help create data sets. Now let's talk about path to AGI or super intelligence, even though it sounds kind of cringe. The truth is that everybody has that in goal. Okay. Um, I don't think it's going to be LLMs because uh, LLMs are constrained. There are probably a few breakthroughs that we are missing that's going to lead to better like thinking, maybe human-like thinking or just better generally thinking models. I think what we need is a lot more different ideas. So many new papers are on large language models and video generation. 
and this is not good. We need to create a lot more ideas, like Jeppa by Jan Le Kuhn, very good. I don't know if that's gonna be AGI, but it's good that we have different ideas. We need different ideas like that. And then continuous uh, thought machines, and then the dragon hatchling, and all of these, and the hierarchical reasoning model. And we need like different ideas like that. And then eventually we will strike gold, like transformers. Currently, I'm thinking that in my research lab that I want to create and I'm creating, we want to focus not on just large language models or not even at all at large language models or a video generation, but on these different ideas and just creating a bunch of them. So in startups in Silicon Valley, people would say ideas are easy, execution is difficult, but I think in AI research ideas are also difficult. And we really don't have nearly enough ideas and different architectures. Coming up with business ideas, startup ideas, like AI agents that automate grocery store logistics is a lot easier and everybody can do that. But coming up with these ideas, like continuous thought machines, this is a lot more difficult. And then the architecture itself is probably less important than the idea, the method behind how the AI learns what it does. For example, my AI is going to look at videos. I'm just inventing this right now on the spot. And maybe it's going to get rid of unnecessary details by compressing videos into latent space. And in JEPA, it's trying to predict that latent representation of the future frames or some parts of the frame. So the idea behind how is it learning? What is it learning? The architecture is less important. This was explained to me by my friend Shu Bo Tian. Uh, he is also AI researcher at these famous universities, Tsinghua and Chinese University of Hong Kong. And he's literally saying that the architecture, he thinks it's less important as to what the AI is learning, what is the main idea behind what's the AI learning and how is it learning. I think a really good way of moving towards super intelligence is to have a system of coming up with many different ideas and trying them out. Now, is it one person, just one area of ideas or one person um, going into a bunch of different areas and types of ideas? I'm not sure, but we do need a few breakthroughs to come up with more human-like intelligence. And by the way, human intelligence is very narrow. It's not general, but it's way more general than current large language models. Thank you, BeamAI, for sponsoring this video. You can automate your business processes and operations without any technical knowledge, just as if you are talking to a coworker. I can just say, I want a customer service agent for refunds, and I can just send this. And it's very easy to automate emails, data entry, data processing, refunds, financial decisions, uh, anything you need. So I will just say, refund if the delivery is marked as faulty and the order was made in the last two weeks. And that's all I need to do. Beam will automatically generate a script of the process and let you read it. Now, I could chat with it here and tell it how to fix it, how to change it, but I'm gonna say this looks good. You see how nodes start appearing out of thin air and uh, there is whole workflow that appeared of what happens with the order and how it's processed and how it goes through the Beams platform. It automatically decided that the first node is gonna be getting the data, the order status from the software that you uh, connect. Now it automatically connected this software, but it's very easy for me to just change to Airtable or Google Sheets or whatever software my company uses. After that, it generated this next node to determine if the order is eligible for a refund based on delivery status and order date. You see how easy it was for me to just tell it in one sentence what to do and it generated all of this. And it's very easy for me to modify any of these tools or instructions just by talking to it. And look how easy to understand this branching is. So if our conditions are met, then it's gonna go on to the refund payment. And if they are not met, then it's gonna go to rejecting the refund. And so you can just type with natural language your condition here. So 
if order contains seven apples, then refund. I can just type that here. No technical knowledge, technical skills required. And all that's left is just to click here to every tool and connect to these tools by just clicking this button and reading the instructions. It's very easy. Beam is designed to require zero technical knowledge or coding experience and it can be used by operations people, business people, customer support people, marketing, sales, etc. Anybody in the company. Click the link below or go to beam.ai slash demo to request access and start automating. So I talked about the bitter lesson earlier, one of the earlier videos. It's the understanding that simple algorithms and a lot of compute will eventually win against uh, complex, highly advanced algorithms and less compute. So humans like to believe that there is some solution, some smart trick, but eventually every smart trick gets uh, outcompeted by just a simple algorithm and a lot of compute. However, the algorithm still needs to be good, but it needs to be general, not specific. General alg algorithms are going to win. And I should have said general, not simple probably. But high complexity algorithms also tend to be specific to some problem and not so general. I just see a new interesting paper that's similar to this paper I was showing you in the beginning of the video. And uh, it seems similar from the title. Robust orthogonalized optimizer for neural network training. This is kind of what uh, this my paper also does. But I wanted to say if you go to daily papers, you will see that most new papers are about language models video generation image generation which is not good we need a lot more ideas we are stuck uh, afraid of what if we waste time doing something else but in research most of the ideas are not gonna work and we should be okay with that and we need to build system that system that lets us test a lot of different ideas quickly why is uh, roblox publishing ai research papers that's funny this is so interesting by Meta. Self-improving AI crossed. AI and human co-improvement for safer co-superintelligence. And this is probably the only AI research lab in the US that's actually publishing uh, good papers uh, all the time and does open science. Like a research lab should, if I dare to say. This idea is super cool. Both humans and AI improving together. Anyways, guys, I'm going to talk about my research here as well a little bit. So the idea is every part of large language model has its own optimizer. This is from the article Modular Muon by Thinking Machines by Jeremy Bernstein. So we want to constrain 1D vectors, which are embedding uh, token embeddings to a hypersphere, which is just going. So the vector is going to go from center of the sphere to the uh, surface of a sphere which is one of unit of the length so unit length and so it will just keep all of the vectors of length one to keep them stable the main idea here is to look at <clears throat> vectors and updates and matrices not as not as singular numbers not as individual values of within the neural network but as literal uh, vectors or matrices that have their own mathematical values. That's the main difference between muon and these modular manifold optimizers um, and Adam and other optimizers. But the muon optimizer is transforming or working on gradient matrices or weight update matrices, whatever you want to call them. But Stiefel manifold uh, is used for weights themselves, just like you can see here. I did a bunch of experiments. I did find uh, that constraining vector embeddings to sphere uh, yields best results, but this was just a little bit of training. So I need to do, we need to do more training. You can do this as well. I'm gonna leave the link to Discord below. If you just go to this uh, URL here in this paper, or I'm gonna leave the link below, you can contribute to this uh, research. That's gonna be it for this video. You can join my school. We have a meeting on Friday and there we will talk about AI research and you can ask questions and I'm gonna try to help everybody discover their AI research path. So seven day free trial, you can 
uh, check out this meeting for free and then it's just nine dollars per month you can also check the courses and engage with community and uh, see you next time for example one person asked about uh, jepa so why does jepa predict embeddings instead of raw input and you can check all of the answers here as well the main idea behind jepa is if you're gener predicting that there is a cat inside of the house because you saw on the video that the, there are scratches in the furniture the main idea behind jepa is you don't need to actually know every uh, length and color of every hair on the cat that's unpredictable you want to just predict the latent representation of the cat not the cat not the image of the cat because that's unpredictable you don't know what exactly cat looks like you just know that there is a cat in the house because there is like a bunch of stuff that that's caused by the cat so a uh, latent representation of the cat would just be some vector that describes that okay this is an animal small animal it has fur it has two ears it has eyes uh, it's from its feline family so you just predict the general uh, latent things about cat that are true for every cat without needing to predict every detail that's impossible to predict and you can also engage into community like this and ask your questions and we will answer them thank you for watching and see you next time